Welcome to The Law Matters. I'm Debbie Moraes, your host and moderator. This is your source for legal information and answers to frequently asked questions on a wide variety of topics. We continue to provide information and resources that address topics of concern in the daily headlines of your newspaper and also in your daily life. The program offers a broad overview of many legal processes as well as details and some relevant cases. Times we hope that some of the anecdotes we share with you are entertaining. We hope to help you understand and prepare for whatever may await you in the legal process. As a public service, The Law Matters was created to help you protect yourself, your family, and your business, as we say. Uh, whether you decide to retain legal counsel or whether you decide to go it alone, pro se. Either way, as we say, our goal is to help you save time, save money, and achieve the best possible results. Attorney David Bizarre with the Bizarre and Associates Law Firm in East Providence continues to offer his experience, perspective, and invaluable insights on each of this session's issues. So we want to, of course, welcome and thank him thank as we begin today's topic, which is lawyers and the Bar Association. Attorneys, what does it take? What does it cost? And the Bar Association, the preeminent voice of the legal community. Certainly it's a professional association, not a fraternity and not a social club, although I assume that there are some social things that go on. We'd like to have you understand better what purpose they serve for you as the general public, as well as serving the purpose of the attorneys that are involved as members. So David, let's begin. You, and this is a good time to say congratulations. Thank you. The Rhode Island Bar Association, new president as of July, July 1. 1. So congratulations and best Thank wishes. You. What is the Rhode Island Bar Association? What purpose does it serve, David? So you, in the open, talked about a lot of different issues and different types of bar associations and so forth. So every member of the Rhode Island Bar, that is every attorney licensed to practice law who wants to be actively practicing law in Rhode Island, has to be a member of the Rhode Island Bar, or what's called a unified bar or a mandatory bar. And that's set up by the Supreme Court. And every state m regulates the practice of law within the state on its own, and the Rhode Island Supreme Court regulates the practice of law in Rhode Island. So many years ago, they created the uh, rule that if you wanted to practice law in Rhode Island, you had to be licensed by the Supreme Court, but also a member of the Rhode Island Bar. And the Rhode Island Bar, in particular, serves a lot of purposes. Is, I understand there's also a volunt it's voluntary, but they also say there's mandatory. Yours is mandatory, and it's a not. There are many states apparently that have it as a mandatory there are, situation. There are very most states, I would say, are mandatory bars. There are some that are voluntary bars, and in those states, different states regulate the practice of law differently. In some states, the bar association does the discipline for the state for disciplining attorneys. Um, they do the testing and admission, perhaps. In Rhode Island, the Supreme Court does the uh, oversight of disciplinary actions against attorneys, and it also is the one that licenses attorneys by making the, they grade them past the, whether you pass the bar exam or not. So that action is done by the Supreme Court, but the Rhode Island Bar works hand in hand with the court system in regulating and, and making attorneys, um, uh, CLEs available to attorneys, which are mandatory, for example. CLEs? continuing legal education. Good point. So I understand that uh, for some bar associations, they need not be a lawyer. They could be an interested party in some ways. Does that pertain to Rhode Island or no? To be a member yes. of the bar? Sure. We have members who are law students, for example. You can join as a law student. The judiciary members are not practicing lawyers, but can right. be members of the bar association. There are um, inactive attorneys who can be members of the bar. So there are a number of different categories um, of membership for the Rhode Island bar in particular. Um, but I was just starting to give you some of the different types of things we do. We have a, um, we regulate a fund, for example, called the IOLTA funds, which every lawyer yeah. has to have. Explain. And the IOLTA fund is interest on lawyers' trust accounts. So when we take money in that we're holding for a client, whether it's through a settlement of an auto accident or personal injury claim, or a real estate transaction where the money is being escrowed and transferred between the buyer and seller. That money is held in an account that is not the attorney's account. The attorneys sign the checks and you know and do the deposits and 
regulations of whatever needs to be done with the account, but the interest on the account goes to the bar association. It's a revenue stream then for you. It's not. Extent. It's not f for the bar association. It's the Rhode Island Bar Foundation, and that money is used to help promote justice by allowing different things to be funded, such as legal services, um, the volunteer lawyer program that the Bar Association runs, and a lot of different types of things. So the money is used to help promote access to justice. And that's one of the things that the Bar Association does. So that fund might also help those who are um, in financial need or not. Financial need for, for a attorneys for a lawyer. To, to have an attorney, yes. Good. yes. And you mentioned a moment ago that that also is working in conjunction with the disciplinary function. The disciplinary function goes through the Supreme Court, but we also have a fund that lawyers pay into that if a lawyer um, takes money from a client and there's no other way for the victims to be able to be compensated, we have a fund that they can go to to collect some compensation back for whatever may have happened. That's good to know because in parallel tracks, as I opened up the segment, there's the purpose that the Bar Association serves for you folks, which will continue on, but also it serves the general public, right. too, which I hope we yep. can share a little bit more of. So too. the Bar Association serves, serves three different constituencies, um, sort of like Laura and Orna, three separate but distinct uh, <laughs> groups. Um, the lawyers that are members, we serve those lawyers so that they're better able to do their jobs and one of the things that makes the Bar Association so important is that we serve the members, the public, as you said, and the judiciary. We serve all three. And it's the work that we do as lawyers that makes the work we do as a Bar Association so important. And what I'd like to explain is that every case a lawyer handles is important. In every individual case he handles, we have to give our most you know, effort to and represent our clients zealously. But it's what we do as a whole that's important. And it's what we do as a whole that helps promote justice and the rule of law. And it's often said that it's the rule of law that stands between anarchy and democracy. And I, I heard a story um, recently that um, I think really sort of illustrates what we do as lawyers in a different way by showing what stonecutters do. And it was a fable that went something like this. There were three stonecutters. And the first one was asked, what do you do? And he talked about what he did as how it affected him. He said, I earn a living. And the second stonecutter said, um, when asked what he did, he talked about technically what he did. I cut stone. And when the third one asked, was asked what he did, he talked about how it affected others. And he talked about, as his face lit up, I build cathedrals. And that's, you know, what lawyers do as a whole is we build the foundation on which the rule of law stands and which protects society. That's a very good example, David. Yeah, Thank I you for so. sharing. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, as I was saying is by doing that, what that allows society to do is we have in the United States of America, the greatest system, and it's our judiciary that allows that really to take place because commercial transactions can operate because people know that if one side or the other breaches their agreement or their contract, that they have a place where they can go and have a fair hearing and have recourse so that you can have commercial transactions. Someone knows that the government can't intrude upon them and that um, they are free from government intrusion because they can always take it to court. And people who go to court know that they have a place where they're going to get a free and fair hearing and that they'll have access to justice. And the lawyers with the judiciary put that place, system in place and we have the best system that there is. That said, for the general public, if they aren't aware of what you do and because it's not communicated or not communicated effectively or people don't know how to get access, that's an issue. And of course, I understand that part of what you do is to try to communicate that. We can certainly say that every state has a bar association. You could go to ribar.org, mass something bar association.org, and find out some information. Hopefully, in this particular segment, we get to talk a little bit more about what else 
that you can do. As fact, I found out in doing a little preparation here that um, there's a set of uh, lawyers that will handle artists that have issues, elderly that have issues, veterans who have issues with distinct right. and specific problems. I'm not sure that any one of those distinct targets would be aware of that. Um, and I don't know what would possess them to suddenly Google the Bar Association for Elderly and I need help and where do I go? Right. So, so let's talk about that and we'll help get that word out. Good. So how does the bar serve the public? The Bar Association, as you said, has many different referral sources and lawyer referral um, services. There's the service for the artist group, the elderly, the lawyer referral service for reduced fee program where you don't qualify maybe for the volunteer lawyer program but you get an attorney who will talk to you and take a case at a reduced fee the armed forces lawyer referral service the senior or elderly lawyer referral service there's a a group of lawyers who have put their names in with the Bar Association and said, I will take those cases and I will help those people with those cases. So that if you don't have a lawyer, you can call the Bar Association and they can set you up with an attorney in your area that is best suited uh, in their opinion to help get you the access to justice that you're entitled to. And you said while they serve the public, you mentioned that they also serve the judiciary, and how would that happen, right. David? So we have different committees, um, bench bar committees, and the Superior Court Bench co Bar Committee, uh, the attorneys that are on that committee meet with the, the judges, whoever the, judge, the presiding justice might assign to meet with them to help make sure that whatever rules we have in place are working. Sometimes they need to be tweaked. We'll study the law or the rules that the judges may want to change and go out and look at model rules in other places and come back with recommendations for the judges to consider um, just practice and what are the best practices. Right now, you may know we have a very large segment of people who are trying to do it themselves, pro se's. That is a burden on the judiciary and the Bar Association works with the judiciary to try to figure out ways to best service the public and the people who are pro se's while not clogging up the court system as much you know, as it is right now. And if you are working on that, it seems to me that it would be worthwhile to get the message out. So you want to do it yourself or you want to do pro se. Here's a website, here are resources where you should go to, I don't know, it's a checkbox, it's a checklist, yeah. it's something. But that sounds like a very good and important service that you're providing. Right, and what we've also done is sometimes people want to do it themselves because of money. Sure. And we are we worked with the judiciary to create the ability under our rules which we didn't have before to do what we call unbundled services yeah. so if it's too expensive to hire an attorney to help you with the entire case we are now in a situation where we have the ability as a lawyer to do work for you on one portion of the case that you may need help with so a lawyer can enter a case for a limited specific purpose that you and the client agree on at a lower fee and help get you through that process wherever you may be in the process that you need help with. So that was some work that the Bar Association did with the courts, the, the judiciary, um, as a service to both the public and the judiciary. That sounds interesting. And of course they do, they exist, the Bar Association exists to serve lawyers' needs. Right. As I looked at that a little bit, I see and not surprisingly, that you have the ability to offer them other lawyers software services, practice management services, maybe even bill collecting, should they need right. that. I also saw that there's a resource, I assume, yes, there's always a library, but in case studies or something, if they wanted to have a quick access or resource to check with something. One that got me uh, in particular, David, was you have a lawyer-to-lawyer -lawyer, sort of a peer um, group that helps support le uh, lawyers, whether they're, I don't know if I want to say if they're being ethically challenged or if they have a question or if they're having some other issues. How well, does that work, David? Well, there's a number of things you just mentioned there. So, interestingly enough, I think the Rhode Island Bar um, serves its members as well as any bar association in the country. We haven't had a raise in our dues in years, and included in our dues are the research ability that you talked about. So included in our dues, 
at a rate that's less than, I don't even think, maybe a month of some of the private services you could have. You have the ability to do legal research in every state, federal cases, um, statutes, everything um, that you can get through those very expensive private services you have. And so that's a service that we offer to all our attorneys just by paying dues, no extra charge. We also have the ability to help attorneys build up their practices through the referral services that you have and to do their jobs as well as you can through all the CLEs that we offer. Again, CLE stands for continuing, continuing legal education, okay. which lawyers have to do. Yes. Um, and we provide um, really top-notch CLEs for our members. Beyond that, we also have a service where you can contact a group that does sort of like practice management advice and help you pick out the best software, technology, how do you want to set up your practice. Um, I think it's an hour or two free. You can then get a discounted rate, but that's a service that's offered to all our members on just practice management. And I don't know of very many, if maybe a handful of bars that offer that to their members. Um, I think you also talked about the lawyer to lawyer um, committee. Which, or whatever that is. Yeah, is it's, it's really called? lawyers that may be in need, um, okay. whether it's a mentoring need, but also a um, physical or mental issue they want to deal with. It's all confidential. We um, help our attorneys get through whatever issues they may have. And it's a stressful practice. It's, it's difficult work that you're doing sometimes, so things can happen. And we encourage our attorneys just to reach out to the committee. Nobody knows about it, just the members that I reached out to, and they help you through whatever issue you may have. So David, if there were a lawyer who was about to have some troubles for how he did or didn't represent someone, um, it, would he benefit by going to such a group first before the sledgehammer hits? I mean, if he knows that something went wrong, did wrong, he did it, whatever it is, she, would it help if, he, if they become part of that group and try to work through things before there has to be a comeuppance. Yeah, I would say no matter what, whether you reach out directly to that group or um, whoever, um, I, I would recommend that group because they can help steer that attorney in the right direction, get them on the right path, not just for that one particular thing, but for whatever it is that may be an issue that's causing the problems. And that's what it's really designed to get to is what's causing the problems. You know, you mentioned earlier that there were three groups, and I don't know that this is a separate group, but it's of interest to me, uh, as you've mentioned over the years, and that um, the group also does things to help the up-and-comers, the younger people, whether they're in, I don't know if it's junior high school, but high school at the very least, uh, those who maybe want to go on to become lawyers, but even if not, for them just to learn a little bit more about what our government is and what their civic duty is and what their, what, how the, what civics means. Right. So could you explain that a little bit? Because I'm sure that that's yeah. things that teachers really need to know about. <laughs> the Bar Association, in conjunction with the court system, the judiciary, uh, sponsors and participates in Law Day. And what Law Day is, it, it, the court will send an attorney and a judge out to any school that's interested. And the topics can be set by the ABA would they give us information to use um, on sometimes? Or if a teacher has a specific request, oftentimes we'll do that. And we come out, I, I did it this year with um, Superior Court Judge Richard Leach. We went to North Providence, I, I believe. Um, and we just had a great time with a really great bunch of students. And it was interactive. It was back and forth on a number of different issues. We stuck to the script a little bit with what this topic was this year, but we answered their questions. And I often enjoy letting the students take us to the places that they're interested in what's relevant to them. So every school system in Rhode Island should be contacting the Supreme Court of the Bar Association and find out how can we participate in Law Day because it's a great program. It certainly sounded as if it is. I understand too that there are essay contests that have uh, a trophy but also yep. a money award yes, associated. Yeah. One or two of them, $1,000, $250, whatever it is. I wonder how many teachers know about it, but if they don't, they should. Right. Um, the kids write essays, you judge yeah. them, and... And, and there's um, an award, but a recognition um, that's given, um, and the ABA does this as well. So you could go to the Rhode Island Bar Association and look up Law Day, or the ABA and look up Law Day. But um, in Rhode Island, you should do it through the Rhode Island Bar Association. Sounds good. So 
suppose some of these students who are listening to you and others uh, about how the law works and what issues they're facing and they want to become a lawyer. So David, how does one become a lawyer? Um, some students go to high school and think that they like English, they like history, I like science. Well, unless I like English, I guess I can't be a, a, a lawyer, which of course is not the case. So just tell us a little bit about how that works. So you can take any path you want to becoming a lawyer. All that you need to do is go to college, enjoy what you're taking. There's no pre-med like um, for law. And you, you just take those courses that are interesting to you and then the LSAT and you apply to law school. And after you go through law school, then whatever state you're gonna take the bar exam in, you take your bar exam and hopefully pass and you can practice law. And Rhode Island has actually joined in with other states in a bar exam that's sort of uniform for you to be able to take. I understand that just happened. It started in 2018, or they talked about it, in right. and it's happening now, so that you can, um, as you say, be able to take the bar exam whenever, wherever it needs to be, and Rhode Island accepts that. Right. So public universities, private institutions, they have classes that will help you learn to become a lawyer. Well, we all know that that can be very expensive. Um, you can address a little bit the cost, but suppose someone said, I started working as an accountant. I started working somewhere part-time. It's taken me a while. Now I decided where I, that I want to be a lawyer. Can you start? Can you go as a part-time? Does it matter if you've had some sort of work background as you apply to uh, a law school? How does that work? I David? think re real world experience and whatever work background you have is excellent for law school. There are law schools that do have night programs. Um, Rhode Island, I don't believe Roger Williams has that anymore. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think they do. But there are programs that you can take. When I went to law school, there was a night program and um, you know, like I said, the experience that some of those students brought into our classroom was just great, and it adds diversity to the classroom, and it's really um, a very special thing to be able to have. Cost of the education these days, four years at a public versus another, and what's the difference? Is there a really very big difference between whether someone went to Harvard Law versus some other? Care to address that? It depends what you want to do when you get out. If you want to practice law at a big New York law firm or work for the federal uh, judiciary, that might make a difference in some instances. Um, there are a number of R Roger Williams graduates who work in the, you know, as clerks. You get a job as an intern or a clerk in the Rhode Island judiciary. Um, there are a number uh, who work and do a great job. So, yeah. I guess if you want to work on Wall Street as an attorney in one of those bigger than, you know, Rhode Island law firms, it might help in that instance. But wherever you're going to go and you do well, you'll do well afterwards. Cost of the education and is there also a scholarship that the various bar associations, yours and yeah. others, offer? All right. So there is. Um, the Rhode Island Bar Foundation um, does offer some help with that. And um, certainly many law schools have different financial aid packages or, or ability to get scholarships and that type of thing. It's expensive. I know it's expensive. And it's worth it because um, it's the education itself. I know a number of people who've gone to law school and never practiced law but use the education that they got from that experience every day. So two things. So I'm still driving home the issue about cost, 100 versus 75 versus, is that realistic these days? You know, Could be? honestly, I, I don't know um, what the cost of law school A is versus law school B. Mm -hmm. um, so I say if, it's a, if money is an issue, go to the law school you can afford, but put the work and do the best you can do there and make it pay off for you in the end. And you started to say that uh, so, you know people who've gone to law school and never, say, been in the courtroom, whatever. This is probably an appropriate time to speak to what other careers that uh, others may opt for if not being a litigator. So from my side of the fence, I certainly know that many who have law degrees have become public relations counselors, and mm -hmm. there's value in that. Some other professions yeah. that come to mind? So business. 
a, a lot of folks have gone through law school and then got an MBA on top of it, perhaps, or didn't, but use it every day in, in business. And some large businesses that they've run through the ranks and it, 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 like I said, um, having a background in the law and then going into business it is a, really it goes hand in glove. It's a, it's a very good fit. Um, teaching. A lot of folks go into teaching. And there's a number of people who are on national media who are hosts of TV shows and so forth who are lawyers as well. Anchors, some of the local network, I mean, the network anchors. Correct. Have done that, certainly. Yep. And I, I'm telling you, they may not sit there and quote the law back and forth to you, but they know it. And if someone gives them some information that they know is wrong, they'll call them on it. And it's because they have that background and that education. When we talk about the preparation, such as law school, there's also the other, I think I've heard it referred to as a nightmare, known as the bar exam. When you finish your classwork, your coursework, um, is there a time restriction within, or a time period within which you must take and pass that bar exam? Um, is it two years, one month, six years? Some I, people take and don't pass it first uh, one, two, and three times. Yeah. So I don't know if there is, you know, you have to take it right away or two years or three years, but I think the sooner to the experience that you've had of being in law school that you take it and they have bar review courses to help you study and know what's going to be on the bar. Uh, it just makes more sense to me that you take it right away because you're just coming off of that education and everything that's involved with it. So continue on with the bar review course and, and go right into it. it. Makes sense. Considering that there seemed to be at one point a glut of lawyers, would you still suggest to a young person who's considering it that there are viable job opportunities in the courtroom situation, never mind as PR counsel or whatever. Is it still a worthwhile thing to pursue? Is there a market for lawyers? There is. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be practicing law in the traditional setting. There's a number of different places that your education will serve you. And if you wanted to practice law, there's more people in Rhode Island who just open up their own shop and say, here I am, and, and practice, and the Bar Association will help that those folks. We call them new lawyers rather than young lawyers because not always very young, but they can be. Um, and we encourage new lawyers or young lawyers, if you will, to be active in the Bar because we have mentorship programs and we'll do whatever we can to help you set up your practice or, or figure out what you need to do. Good. Another vocation, as I think of it, uh, lobbyists. Many lobbyists right. are, are lawyers. Yeah, too. I mean, I, I know f many folks who have lobbied, um, practiced law before they did that, and just because of what they did is in their practice, fell into that kind of role. Good. Thank you. We hope that this has been helpful to you. We spoke about Rhode Island Bar Association. There are bar associations in every state worthwhile to check out. Thank you for tuning in to The Law Matters. Please do stay tuned for the next segment because The Law Matters to you.